Find the range, variance, and standard deviation for the following FPNL electric bill amounts. Okay, they've given us a little note here and they give us some summary calculations to use because uh, the work here would be kind of tedious without them. I've relisted those here so you can see them better. You might not be able to see those on your screen at home. Um, let's recap how they got them real quick. N equals 12 because there are 12 values here, the 12 months of data. The summation of X, what they did to get that is they added up all these values to end up with the total for the whole group. Then they have the summation of X squared. If you wanted to do that at home, you would square each of these values. And once you were done squaring all of them, you would add that list up that you've created and you would end up with this value here. And that's how you would get the results. This part here, the squaring each value and then adding it up, that's kind of tedious. So that's why this problem has given it to us to start with. All right, so let's calculate the range first. The range is pretty easy. The range involves simply subtracting two numbers, the high number minus the low number. So high minus low will give us the range. So I look down this list, I see that I think 215 is the largest number in the list. I'm pretty sure that's our biggest number. There's no number in here that's larger than that. So I'm gonna write the 215.94 and subtract off the lowest number. And I'm pretty sure that the lowest number here is 52.28. So $52.28. And when I subtract those two numbers, I'll end up with $163.66. Okay, so that's my range. All right, so that's easy enough. Let's calculate the variance next. So to calculate the variance, and for this, it'll be the sample variance because obviously um, this is not all the electric bills for this person um, or for uh, the entire world, right? So we're not gonna see it as the population variance, but rather it'll be the um, sample variance. If you're only interested in the one year in 2009, then it might be the population variance, but we'll assume it's the sample variance and it has the formula S squared equals to N times the summation of X squared minus the summation of X quantity squared, all divided by N times N minus one. All right, so that's the formula for variance. All right, so let's fill that out together. The N we have here, that's 12. The summation of X squared, that's one number, right? And that number is given to us. It's the 276,000 14.86 minus the summation of x squared. The summation of x is given as 1,698.23 squared. And then we will divide by n, which is 12, times 12 take away 1, which of course is 11. Okay. So the bottom of this fraction, 12 times 11, of course, is 132. Let's use the calculator to get the top half of it. So we'll have 12 times 276, 14.86, minus 1,698.23 squared. And when you finish all of that at the top, you end up with 428,193.23. 0.1871. And then after performing our division there, we end up with 3,243.89. I'm going to round it there. Let's talk about the units now for this calculation. The variance always has squared units. So if the data originally started out in dollars, like it is here, then this is going to be dollars squared. Dollars squared. So what's a dollar squared, right? That's a very strange unit. That's one of the reasons why we prefer instead to use the standard deviation. So let's look at that next, the standard deviation. Okay, so the standard deviation, the formula for it is S equals to, and it's basically the square root of the variance. So we can actually just shorten it by saying the square root of S squared. Since we know what S squared is above here, and we've already calculated it, that if we just do the square root of that result, we'll end up with S. Okay, so let's do that. The standard deviation will be the square root of the variance. And for us, that's going to mean the square root of 3,243.89. And when you take the square root of that, you end up with 
Let's do that. I'm actually raising it to the 0.5 power. If you didn't know, um, that's another way to do a square root. You can raise the number to the 0.5 power. And uh, we end up with 56.9, let's say six, okay? And that's gonna be $56.96. So remember, if the units for variance were dollars squared, when you take the square root, you'll remove the square and it'll just be dollars again. So this is another thing that's nice about standard deviation is that the units that we started with will be the units that standard deviation has always. So if the data was given in dollars, then the standard deviation will also be in dollars. And that's a nice property. I can understand $56.96. I know what that is. I don't know what a dollar squared is. That's confusing. Okay, so we've calculated our range, our variance, and our standard deviation, and we've expressed the units for each calculation here. And that's it.